is Aiden Hutchinson going to be the number one overall pick, or we're just seeing a lot of smoke and fire and and lying and rumor mongering and things like that right now? What what can you tell me? You think? Yeah, so I've had Walker number one for the last couple of weeks, and there's a lot of rolled eyes, and now the pendulum has swung all the way around. Where now Walker is being considered the favorite for the number one overall pick out of Georgia, and now there's all the second guessing of like. All right, but is that just because uh, everyone has not been sold on on Hutchinson anymore? The truth is, I don't think Jacksonville's over the over the over the the moon on on Hutchinson, and it goes back to Trent Baalke, who's the general manager, and what he historically has done as the general manager of the 49ers. and it was taking Anthony Davis, a little known tackle out of Rutgers, because of the physical traits over Brian Bulaga. It was taking Alden Smith over J.J. Watt and Robert Quinn, who are monsters at the college level. Um, it's a history of taking the physical specimen and the guy who can do more physically than necessarily the finished college product. I think it's it's somewhat insulting in a backhanded way to Aiden Hutchinson to suggest he isn't that sort of athlete. But I've had Trayvon Walker compared to Micah Parsons by a few personnel folks saying maybe not the player he is right now, but the versatility of being able to line up over center, linebacker, defensive end, do a lot of things with him. And right now, the, the, the way it's here, and it, it could be just as easily be Trayvon Walker or Evan Neal than it would be Aiden Hutchinson. So I don't think anyone knows for sure, including the folks in Jacksonville, but this is not the slam dunk, uh, put it in pen, Aiden Hutchinson, as they might have thought it was coming out of the combine in February. Well, why would the Jaguars take an offensive lineman when they've already signed Cam Robinson uh, to a franchise tag? And, you know, that, again... The, he's signed. He's, he's going to be there. Signed. That's happening. He is there. So why would that they go ahead one, and get another lineman? Why would they do something that is like for, that? That is for one year, and it might be longer if they can work out a long-term deal between now and July 15th, of course, but that is a one-year deal at the moment, and you're looking at Trevor Lawrence being your quarterback for the next 15 years, and that's the hope. And if you can find him a guy who can protect him uh, at, a, at a level right away, like they, you might think – either Icky or Evan Neal can. You can make that pick, and both Icky and Evan can play on the right side or the left side. So you look at those two players, think they both make a lot of sense if you're Jacksonville, even with Cam Robinson on the roster. But the, the, the truth of it is, Rich, and we spoke about this um, internally at the NFL Network, we're not going to sell this draft on the quarterbacks or, hey, here's, here's the next uh, Hall of Fame player at number one overall. We're selling it on the unknown and the intrigue, and I consider myself as plugged in as anybody, and I can tell you right now, no one knows or no one can even project with a firm handle on it who Jacksonville's even taken at the one spot. And you go back through the years, I can't remember a draft like this, going back maybe to when Eric Fisher was the first overall, mm. and it was like Eric Fisher or Luke Jokel. You know, that was the question. So that's going back more than a decade. I, I love this draft. I think there's so many unknowns, and it really makes it intriguing to watch. Yeah, I mean, when Baker Mayfield was drafted first overall, I mean, the word was coming out a few hours before that it was going to be yeah. him, but I still needed to hear the words come out of Roger Goodell's mouth to actually, you know, believe it. What are the odds? And that's rare that I'm able to say, ask those questions about anything in Las <laughs> Vegas. Uh, what, what are the odds that we really won't know? Like that, that Roger Goodell will truly be the Paul Revere telling us who's coming to Jacksonville. What do you think? It's a great question. You know, last year I was, um, I was, I was on record saying everywhere that I think it's Trey Lance or Mac Jones, Trey Lance or Mac Jones, three of the Niners. And at the last second, I said, it's going to be Mac Jones. It's going to be Mac Jones. And, I had worked with John Lynch as a sideline reporter for Fox crew. I've known Kyle Shanahan for years. And to this day, I'm like, gosh, I was even shocked. And I know those guys inside and out when they went with Trey Lance. Um, I think that there's a chance that these, these guys in Jacksonville can keep this secret all the way up until the draft. Now, whether it was John Dorsey or it was Elliot Wolf or whoever it was as the head coach at the time in Cleveland who let it out of the bag hours before, but we knew Baker about – two o'clock, you know, on a draft that was starting at six o'clock. This one, I don't think we're going to know. I really don't because it has been so kept under secret and lock and key at this point that I think it might feel like that San Francisco pick, which I watched back earlier this week uh, or yesterday. I watched it back and your reaction, Rich, was everyone else's. Wow. They actually did it. They took Trey Lance over Mac Jones. That's what we want to hear. Uh, we want to hear suspense. We want to hear you to be so surprised when that pick is in that no one picked this pick, and it is a pure reality show, and even the player is surprised when his name is called. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.